Hello, John Talley here with PartZilla.com. Today we're going to be looking at the charging system on our Honda CBR600RR. It's basically made up of three main pieces. Your regulator rectifier, your stator, and most importantly, your battery. Well, we're going to start by looking at the battery, and it's actually hidden up under the seat, as you probably well know. So, let me grab a couple of tools, and I'll show you how to get all this stuff tested. All right, let's get the seat off. Just a five millimeter Allen, nothing that special. All right, the first test we're gonna do is just a voltage test. And to get a really accurate reading, you wanna go ahead and just disconnect your uh, motorcycle from the battery. I typically do the, uh, the negative side first, then the positive. So that greatly reduces your chances of uh, shorting out the positive when the negative's already disconnected. And what we're using here is just a uh, digital volt, volt ohm meter. And we want to set it to DC volts. And that's signified by these two str uh, straight lines over the, uh, the V. And what we're looking for here is something a little north of 12 and a half volts or at least 12 volts. All right, we're at 12.08. That's a fair reading. Um, not great, um, more in the order of like 12.3 to 12.4 would signify a completely healthy battery. This one's just a tick off, but it's, it's not quite done yet. Um, we're gonna do another test with another piece of equipment with a, well, that will actually tell me the health of the battery. So let me go grab that piece of equipment and we'll get it tested as well. All right, we've got her connected up, and this thing tests by the specific battery, and uh, the one that's called for in this machine is uh, Uasa YTZ-10S, and they actually have a uh, an aftermarket one in there. I can't really tell what it is, but we're going to test it as if it is the, uh, the Uasa. All right, YTZ-10S, that's what we've got. So we're going to test that exact battery. All right. As I suspected, this is telling me to replace the battery. See, it's got the voltage, but its state of health is pretty much zero. Now, are you gonna have one of these laying around to use? Probably not. Um, if you do suspect your battery is bad, um, I'd suggest just running it to the dealership, let them do a quick test on it for you. But as this one predicted, you know, there's, this battery is on its way out. For comparison's sake, I'm gonna bring over a new battery that's ready to go, do the same test on it so I can show you the differences. So let me grab that other battery. All right, our static voltage using our uh, regular VOM meter, 12.96. Pretty big difference, almost a volt more than the, uh, the one that's still in there. All right, let's grab that other tester and do a dynamic test on it. Twelve point nine six YTZ ten S. Good battery, imagine that. State of health all the way over. State of charge hundred percent. So the battery that was in there, did it still start the machine? Yeah. Um, was it very enthusiastic about it? No, not really. I'm already at, right at it, got the battery out. Guess what? I'm going to go ahead and replace this one. After that, I'm going to go through the rest of the, uh, the charging system. I know it's working correctly. I'm just going to show you what to look for. So let's get this other battery put in and then we'll continue on. Really simple here. It's just a, a strap holding it in place. And you'll notice those other two wires right here. That's just a, a battery tender. And she just lifts out. Yeah, that was an aftermarket one. These are okay, but it's one of those cases you get what you pay for. Um, that's why I always like going back with the, the UASA brand. It's what the machine came with to begin with. And as it cost 50 or $60 more than an aftermarket, well, yes, but I think you get increased value out of it by virtue of it lasting longer. Uh, right now I'm just putting in the, uh, the bolts that the uh, battery terminal screws are going to go into. All right, we are going to reconnect our 
battery tender as well. By doing the negative terminal last, if you were to short out right now the positive, it wouldn't do anything because it can't complete the circuit. There's no way for it to, to go back. Another common mistake. All right, I just tighten those down with a, uh, a Phillips. It's important to put a little bit more torque on it than that. That's always do the finish with a small uh, quarter inch. I mean, you want to shear off the terminal, but they do need to be tight. All right, get that hidden around there. All right, next up, what we're actually going to do is pull this side fairing and uh, take a look at the regulator rectifier and do some uh, measurements on it. All right, to get the front fairing off, all we had in place were three five millimeter Allens and then these two plastic rivets. The, uh, they're actually hidden up at the front of the fairing. And when you pull the fairing off, make sure you disconnect your turn signal wiring and just lay the fairing out to the side. All right, guys. This is the entire system. Regulator rectifier up there. Your stator is actually behind this cover where you can visualize it. And then of course the battery up top. So I wanna see if this machine is charging properly. So let's set it back to DC volts. Go ahead and connect up to our battery. So let's see what we've got, which we already know is almost 13 volts. 12.9 to somewhere in that neighborhood. New fresh battery, we know we're good to go. Now, to determine if it's charging, still leave it connected. Go ahead and start the machine up. All right, we're looking for around 14 volts, and that's exactly what we're getting. So, this charging system is doing what it's supposed to be doing. What if it were not? Let's say, you did a startup on it and the voltage didn't change. It stayed at around that 12.9 volts. That means that something's going wrong with either the stator or the voltage rectifier. So we can do a static check, which means unplugging the, uh, the rectifier, and I'm going to show you how to test the internals on it. There's two plugs. There's one that goes down to your, your stator, and it's just these three wires. All right, guys, we've got that unplugged. And what we're going to do is use our, uh, our meter over here to check the forward biasing of the diodes. There's actually three of them inside of there. So the way to do that is go ahead and set it toward that little symbol right there. That's a um, sign for a diode. And of course, that also is where you, uh, on this unit, uh, measure ohms. So what we want to do is rotate it until that little symbol comes up in the top right corner. All right, to forward bias, the diodes in here, what we do is take your positive and put it on the ground side, or what was the ground side, the regulator rectifier output, the, the one that goes to the battery. And now the connector that was going to the stator, there's your three phases that's creating the AC signal. And what you're going to be looking for here is about 0.5 volts. Well, a little bit less than that, 0.461 is what we're uh, reading on this one. So that tells me that that particular diode, I'm forward biasing it back, and that's the voltage uh, I should be having go across it. So that's what we're looking for. Go to the next one, it should be fairly close, 4.63. So I mean, it's right on top of it. And last but not least, we pretty much know the answer to this, 4.64, so yes, that part of the, uh, the voltage regulator rectifier is working correctly, which we already knew because this unit is charging. Now, what would it read if it were not charging correctly? Each one of those would probably uh, be read as either an open circuit or a complete short circuit. So in other words, it would be going to ground. So if it didn't a number around the 0.4, you've got a problem with your regulator rectifier. All right, guys, let's take a look at it, the stator. Um, the Honda manual says just to uh, do a... Uh, resistance check. And what you're looking for in between uh, uh, each one of these yellow wires is somewhere in between 0.1 and 1 ohms. I don't particularly like this test because I don't feel that it's very accurate. All right, there's our 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Let's go in between these two, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.10, 0
5.2 and just for fun we'll do in between those all right so she's within a uh, range let me show you another trick to see if it's really working or not what i'm going to do is actually start up the machine and uh, do an ac voltage check on it should be around 15 volts ac now what i did is i reconnected this ground remember i pulled that off when i pulled off the bracket so i've got the ground reconnected i'm going to the negative there volts ac start her up right at 15 volts a little over a little bit over that gives you a better idea that this thing is actually uh, outputting an AC voltage uh, which that's all it does all right as we knew you know going into this everything is all right on this machine all right if we just did that test what would have signified that there was a problem all right, more than likely on your resistance check, it would be an open circuit. So one of these wires or these windings would be burned through. That's typically what happens to a, a, a stator when it goes bad. Um, as far as taking a, a measurement of the AC voltage, what would you see? You know, probably zero volts or something close to it AC. And that pretty much uh, wraps up um, our, our charging system as a whole. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps up this, uh, you know, I more or less call it just a diagnosis of the charging system on our machine. All I've got to do now is just plug things back up, get the covers put back on, and take her out for a ride. Listen, if you need any of the parts that we used on this, come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. If you're having some tr issues or trouble uh, understanding or following what I was doing, you can leave me a comment in the section below and I'll do my best to answer it. Until next time, we just want to say thanks for watching.